All right, this is how I built my dual Taurus fan setup for my uh, 99 uh, 454 Suburban. All right, I just ordered these units off of Amazon. They were like 62 bucks a piece. Um, they're just clones. I mean, they're not OEM, but they're they're clones of the originals. Um, these particular ones are Spectras. Um, I don't know what the real difference would really be, but I'm not using a used one that's 25 years old. I'm not. That thing's that they're gonna die soon, so I'm not gonna go with that. I'll just go with new ones. But anyway, all right. So the width of these things actually winds up being right around I'll try to measure it but I can't hold the damn phone I'll just take my word for it from the side of the shroud right here and there's an opening that I covered up I guess for you know to bleed it bleed air um, I covered those up there's one over here and there's one over here too I just covered those up used uh, aluminum tape uh, works pretty good um, from this side over to this side of the shroud um, is just under 34 inches like just a hair under 34 inches, like I don't know 33 and 3 quarters something like that so if you put both fans together they will actually sit inside the core um, the only thing I didn't like about that is you wind up with a gap that's in between here and that is going to be a certain percentage of your radiator that's not going to get cooled plus this is bumped out over here um, it still fits inside the core but then you have this big open area right here that is just sitting on top of the core and some of the core is exposed so you're not getting any cooling going through that plus it's going to recirc air from inside the engine compartment you're just going to be pulling hot air back through it and bringing it back in so i didn't want to do that what i wanted to do was 100% of the core getting outside air. So, what I did, let me flip this over. Oh. All right, I got some three quarter inch C channel, and I'll show you in a minute where that locks down into. There's a lip down where the old fan shroud, the lower fan shroud, was attached to that this locked into well not this but the old fan shroud uh screwed into so i got rid of the of course the old uh the lower fan shroud and i had to modify it because it's not perfectly straight across that had to cut part of it but this c channel uh locks right down onto it and keeps it stable and pushed up against the uh the radiator so I highly advise using one of these. You'll have to, like I said, you'll have to modify the lip down at the bottom because um, it, it goes straight for about 80% and then it turns out and the thing won't sit on there. You'll have to cut it and bend it down out of the way. But I also put a uh, some weather stripping, just Lowe's weather stripping. It's rubber. It seems to handle the heat fine. Haven't had any problems with it. Um, just put it all along there to give it, you know, so it doesn't wear, you know, from the vibration and everything and it stays put. Once you lock it into place, it pretty much doesn't move. Okay, over here on the sides, I used uh, eighth inch uh, aluminum flat bar all along here and just bolted it into the lip of the actual shroud. Um, it's actually really solid. It doesn't flex at all. Um, and then I just put some weather stripping, some rubber weather stripping there. And then in the center to bolt them together, I used another piece of one and a half eighth inch. I just got it all as one piece. I just cut it into smaller pieces. So it's just one big ass piece that you get. It was like 20 bucks or something like that. Um, and then over here on the side, I did the same. Because what this is going to do, this is going to rest on the end tanks instead of the core. So none of this actually touches the core at all. Um, it hovers above the core. Um, I can't actually get in there to measure it too well, but just looking in there, there's at least a good inch, uh, over an inch between this uh, part right here and the actual core. So you're getting airflow through that. Um, and then up here on the top, 
Uh, that's a one inch uh, square aluminum tube. It also came from Lowe's. Um, I just got a 36 inch piece and just cut it down. And then uh, for the hangers, you know, hold it into place, bolt onto the front cross member. Um, I just took what left over uh, one and a half eighth inch I had left over and just bent it down. I mean, it's not super beautiful, but you know, it works. It holds it in place. The thing does not move. Um, and I just got some uh, more weather stripping for up here at the top because there will be a gap. There will be about maybe a little over a quarter inch, three eighths gap um, at the top. So I just filled it in with this uh, rubber weather stripping. And it seems to work good. Having that, I mean, it doesn't get hot enough to melt it or anything like that. Um, works pretty damn good. One thing I was really surprised about these things is they're really quiet. I mean, there's another video of a guy putting, um, I forget what those fans are. He said, oh, don't put the fans on, whatever, it sucks. No, it doesn't. Dude, this is the best thing I've ever done to this truck. The mechanical fan, which was offset by the body lift, uh, just could not keep up with the AC on. It would do it okay, you know, as long as you didn't have the AC on in 90, 95 degrees. But as soon as you turn the AC on, the temperature just started rising. And, I mean, you could flog the throttle a little bit and it would drop back down. But it just, nothing I did made it any better. I put a new radiator in it. I put high flow water pump, high flow thermostat, 180 thermostat, and nothing would you know, nothing would cool it down until I put this on there. Um, now, one thing that was kind of a surprise, I did a previous video on the amp draw of these things. And free air, each one of these draws about 11 amps. Okay, and then laying them on the flat on the ground where they've got a lot of resistance, they go up to about 13, a little over 13. And I was, I thought it would have took more than that on low on high they're right around 30 and then when you lay them down you know and it's really hard for them to pull the air through they jump up to about 32 33 but the, the funny thing was once i got these on and i put them in there i thought the heat would uh kick up the amp draw a lot it really doesn't um i think the total amp draw that i measured was only like just under 25 amps so two of these on low actually draws less power than one on high and the way i wired these was each fan has its own uh separate circuit um separate relay separate circuit you know all the way back to uh, uh the power source so these aren't sharing power except for you know the common uh you know on the back of the uh fuse box uh you know you got your auxiliary studs that you can plug into um, but that's the only common place they have. I did separate uh, hookups, so that way um, you don't have to worry about using these lugs. Um, a lot of people were saying they create too much resistance, and I would say when you get up 30, 40 amps, you probably are, and these things are going to start burning up. But at 15 amps mo at the most, I wouldn't think twice about using these things. Plus, uh, the little relays. Let me get the relays. These, uh, you know, these 30, 40 relays, I mean, these things are, you know, they're cheap. These seem to handle these just fine. I mean, they're rated at 30, 40 amps. I mean, these things at the most are going to eat 15 each. So, I mean, I wouldn't think twice about using these little relays and even using the push-on connectors. I mean, it just, it doesn't draw a whole lot of power, you know, per fan. As long as you do it in a dual circuit and you don't try to run everything through one single relay, um, what my original plan was, was to get, you or not get, but use one of these or two of these to run the high circuits on it. Um, these things are actually pretty big. You can see the difference. You can get these off of Amazon too for, uh, I think they were like 11, 12 bucks. They weren't super expensive. But one of these would probably handle both fans on high. Um, and I've actually got one mounted in the truck and I have uh, heavy circuit breakers in there, 60 amps each. But after I ran this thing on low, because I knew my stock alternator would not handle it um, on high, I was like, oh, I'll just see what it does on low, you know, and just run around with that. Um, you know, if it can handle it, if not, then I'll just park the truck and just wait for the alternator. But running the truck in 95 degrees, actually the hottest day I've run it in, it was 96 degrees out 
and I just let it sit in my driveway with the AC on and just watched it, you know, let it run, you know, went off and did something, come back and check it. And it never went above 188 degrees, like never even one time. And I was like, oh, well, let me go to the store and try it. So I drove down the road. It never went above 188. And then on a day that it was like 89 degrees or 88, 89, something like that, the thing started actually dropping down to like 186. And then last night I was running it and we went to Walmart and sitting out in the parking lot, wife didn't want to go in. So she's just chilling out there. I left the truck on. I come back and the thing's sitting at 183. So I might actually have to take the 180 thermostat out and put the 195 back in because it's actually starting to run a little too cold. Because when the winter comes, this thing's going to be running down into one damn 70s if, you know, if it, if it runs that damn cold. Um, so I can't believe the performance of these things on uh, on low. And the biggest thing is they're, they're so quiet. You, you literally can't hear these things when they're on. I had to actually look at my amp meter in the truck to actually see that they were uh, on. Because they draw, you know, 24, 25 amps. But when they're on, you can walk by the front of the truck and you, all you hear is the engine running. These things are super, super quiet. Now, when they're on high, I, I would assume they're, they're probably butt loud as hell. Um, but these things are fucking amazing, man. And you figure... <clears throat> These were 62 bucks a piece, all right? And the metal, you know, buying the aluminum and everything, uh, is probably $40 worth of aluminum and hardware because I just used uh, screws, you know, just regular screws. Just buy them in a, you know, in a, in a, multi, in a uh, what do you call it, a bulk pack. Uh, I think they were like 8 or $9 for a bulk pack of these nuts and screws. I think these are number eights, um, little half-inchers. Um, and then I used some, uh, I, ha I already had some stainless steel self-tapping screws that I was using on my boat. Like these are all self-tapping, um, all this stuff up here. And I've had to make a little mount plate for the uh, fuse box, you know, the stock one that came off the old shroud. But these are all, I pre-drilled all these holes and then, uh, you know, self-tapped them with the screws themselves. This thing is really rigid. I mean, it does not flex at all. There's no slop in it at all. I mean, it barely, I mean, I'm putting a little stank on it to make it move just even a little bit. So, I mean, the shrouds on these things are very, very uh, stout. So I don't think you have to worry about them being flimsy or anything like that. Um, do another shot. You got to put some wire loom on it, just make it look a little, you know, more, you know, nicer. I didn't want a bunch of wires hanging all over the place. Can't stand that shit see all of that it's all screwed in there all of those self tappers the mounts you kind of gotta you know measure and feel for yourself I can't really you know say exact measurements because I was just kind of you know bending them whatever uh, these things work really 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 good anybody that's got a big block i would suggest you get these because i mean they're just, they just they work so good man um one thing i would advise though is get a or a overdrive pulley for your alternator because my suburban um mine is a z 70 lt whatever the hell the, the, it's got every option you could think of um, rear air, all that shit. Um, when you turned everything on, before, I mean, even without anything added onto the truck, when I was sitting in traffic, uh, just idling, you know, the alternator could not keep up. When I had high beams on, uh, you know, both AC units, full blast, you know, stepping on the brake lights, everything, I sat there and I could watch my voltmeter drop. Um, and I changed the alternator, thought the alternator was weak, and it wasn't. I put a new alternator in, did the exact same thing. Um, so I've got a 49 millimeter uh, pulley on my alternator and that seemed to have bought me a good 15 amps at idle because I've added some stuff onto the truck and I have an amp meter in the truck and it's gone up right at about the extra 15, 18 amp mark, the voltage starts dropping below 13. So right around in there, 49 millimeter uh, 
pulley will buy you about 15 amps on a stock alternator. Right now, I still got stock stock alternator in. But here is the belt you're going to need if you put a 49 uh, millimeter. Drop damn thing. Uh, I went through about five belts trying to find the right size one, and this thing is absolutely perfect. Uh, it pulls the idler in a little bit tighter, so you're getting more tension on your pulleys, um, and it never squeaks. It does not squeak at all. Uh, and it spins the alternator good. Like I said, gives you another 15, 18 amps of draw um, at idle, um, and that's, you know, that's enough to handle these. Um, if I turn my stereo up, um, I notice it start dropping below 13 uh, amps, but, um, but that's with high beams, uh, stepping on the brake lights, uh, you know, all the interior. I mean, that's trying, to, that's trying to overload the alternator is the only time it really drops. Normal driving, you know, running the AC full blast, just with your regular headlights on uh, and the stereo going, it's, it, it usually never drops below 13, 13 volts. It's usually hanging up about 13.4, 13.5, and then, you know, during the day, it's always like 13.8, 13.9. So, definitely do a 49 millimeter, uh, you know, pulley. Get them off eBay. They're like 15 bucks, maybe, 20 bucks. I don't think they're that expensive, and they're really easy to put on. Um, but, yeah. So, there's a part number again for that belt. It's a Deco, I mean, it's, you know, generic brand. But you can find an equivalent for another. Uh, better uh, manufacturer if you want. Oh, right up there. There's the old pulley. I just kept it for shits and giggles. But yeah, I actually, I don't think I'm going to even bother with the high speed circuit on it. Because to do that, I've got to upgrade the alternator because that's another 60, 70 amps. I've got to put. Uh, higher gauge wire in so I got to buy all that wire I mean I already bought the relays and the breakers so I mean that's I don't know I'll just repurpose that stuff for another project um, but it significantly drops the price of doing this so you figure 62 bucks for these like I said 40 bucks for the aluminum um, and another 10 bucks for hardware um, I think the adjustable thermostat for it was uh, so it's $28. I posted a link in one of the uh, groups, group forms. And then uh, when I go out to the truck, I'll show you how the uh, temperature, I got the uh, temperature sensor uh, put in there. I used one of these jammies because I bought it for one of my jet skis because I wanted uh, gauges on my jet skis. I hate the fact that jet skis don't come with gauges, man. It just sucks. All you get is speed and uh, dummy lights and a... Uh, tachometer but none of them seem to come with oil pressure and water temperature I fucking hate that so I bought one of these bad boys now this one doesn't fit the truck um, this is one I had bought for a jet ski but it was actually too small um, but these you cut your outlet for your uh, the water hose coming out of the top of the engine and you put this in line with it and then the sensor for the adjustable thermostat screws right in there and then that screws for grounding um, and it's it's a perfect fit. I mean, it's like a nothing install. I mean, you'll spill coolant. That's like the worst thing that happens. But these things are fucking awesome. And I think I paid at eight dollars for this. They're not expensive, and it's solid aluminum. Again, Amazon or eBay, whichever you prefer. These work pretty good. All right, I'll. Uh, I did a previous test for, for airflow. I'm gonna do another one because. When I did the original test with the uh, stock fan, I had the cover, uh, you know, that the, the plastic cover that's part of the shroud that goes over the uh, gap that's in between the radiator and the front cross member. Um, and it kind of skewed the test a little bit because when I did the test with the fans, I didn't have that cover on there. And later on, I put a cover on it and it made a significant difference in airflow, uh, you know, going through the uh, meter. And I'll redo that and uh, show that too. So, all right, this is the radiator uh, sitting down in there. I haven't hooked anything up. I literally just laid it in there. I mean, it's sitting in its correct spot, but I haven't bolted anything down or hooked any of the wires or anything up. 
So there's the old fuse box. I got to bolt that back down. That goes uh, right there. Let me hook everything back up. All right, this is with everything mounted back in there, hooked up. I pulled the computer out of the way so you can see where I stuffed all the wiring and everything. Kind of get it out of the way a little bit. Uh, the big relay there, I'll probably just pull that out because I don't think I'm going to wind up using it. And then I bought those breakers. Uh, those were on Amazon. They were like, you know, they're 12-volt breakers, 60 amps each. I was going to hook those up to the high sides. Um, but I guess now we probably don't need them. Um, they were like 11, 12 bucks. Um, that's the little relay setup I made. Um, actually, I actually only needed two because one of those relays, it's three relays. Um, but I only needed two since I'm not going to use the high side because one was to switch between the high and the low side. So but I'm not going to take it all apart and just leave it in there. It's already bolted, mounted, everything. So now these are those inline sensor holders that I was talking about earlier. These are 40 millimeter, but they were a little big. Um, I barely got those up into the hose, upper hose right there. Um, this one's for the high side, and this one's for the low side, you know, blue, cold, red, hot, whatever. Um, I actually bought two adjustable thermostats, but now that I'm not going to have the high side, I don't really need it, so, but I'm not pulling it all apart. It's, I'll just leave it in there. Um, so if you want to hook it up, get one of these. This is what it'll look like when it's in there. You just cut the hose and put them in line with it, and then screw your uh, sensor down, and then I ran... Uh, spliced a uh, pigtail off of the uh, AC clutch, ran it over to here to another relay to uh, kick the fans on whenever the AC clutch engages. So, and I'm gonna tell you what, the AC works a lot better now. I mean, like a lot better. You're sitting there idling, you gotta turn it off. It'd be 90 degrees outside, you gotta turn that thing down, it gets so damn cold. So, that works really good. But, like when I did my test before, uh, the airflow test, I did not have this covered up. And it made about a hundred, uh, maybe it was 120 uh, cubic feet a minute difference in airflow. I mean, the airflow through the radiator was the same, but it was recircling air from under the hood. So now it's pulling it mostly from, you know, the front down here instead of uh, recircling it from underneath. So you're getting a lot more airflow through the front. So, actually, I'll hook that meter up real quick and uh, do another uh, test because I, uh, I haven't videoed a new, another test with that yet. on right now and I if I didn't know it I wouldn't couldn't even hear the damn things. 